Hi, good morning. I was going to say good afternoon, all of my friends and viewers in YouTube world. I have a very, what I consider to be a very important video. This is not necessarily a teaching video. It's more of a help me. I'm going to ask some questions that I desperately, I need help with. I've been a Bible student. I've never gone to seminary or anything like that. But I've been a very dedicated student of the Word of God for 57 long years. Well, now I am really stumped. I am really stumped. And I'm just asking for help in the comments section. I may not be able to respond due to my sore hand and, and my cataract in my eye. I probably can't respond to all of you, uh, so don't be offended. But the help I need is on a subject... Well, as, a, as two parts, kind of. One of them is a subject that Jesus Christ spoke of in the New Testament called the outer darkness. I want to know what that means. What does that mean? The other one is I have questions that some of the women in particular on their YouTubes, this is where you get in trouble when you watch the, a lot of YouTubes, on their YouTube channel have told us literally that we're going to go to hell if we uh, use makeup of any kind, including lipstick, if we uh, wear necklaces like I'm wearing or earrings, if we wear slacks, she calls them, they call them trousers, which they're not, they're slacks. Um, if we do the normal thing that most modern women do, which is, you know, nice haircuts if possible, maybe a perm. And, of course, if you dye your hair, you're going to go to hell. They say that, too. So all of you Christians out there with dyed hair that use makeup and jewelry, you're going to go to hell three times over. And that's what they teach. Not everybody teaches that, of course not. But there is a number of so-called messengers out there that are telling us that, and it terrifies me. And then the subject of the outer darkness doubly terrifies me. Now, I'm going to read the scriptures about the outer darkness, but first I want to pray a little bit. And before I pray, I want to say, uh, do a little shout out to my very beloved uh, viewer, Ken, in Australia. He writes me very long, wonderful letters on the inter on the computer, and he's such an encourager. He's around my age, and he lives in Australia, I believe it is, or New Zealand. I think it's Australia. And he's just been a real comfort to me and a real joy to me. So I want to thank you, Ken, for the time you give to me. Thank you. Heavenly Father God, I bow my heart before your throne. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Heavenly Holy Spirit of God, I bow my heart before you, before Jesus, and before Father God. I am so grateful, Lord, for the salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. But I am perplexed, Lord, and I'm frustrated, and I'm hurt by some of the things I see on YouTube. I mean, I'm really hurt and frustrated and confused. And I shouldn't be because I've studied your word diligently for over 50 years, but I need help. And I ask that my viewers chip in if they can and help me out, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I surrender this prayer to you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, I want to give you a, a warning or a caution about YouTube. Yes. I do YouTube. I just talk. That's all. I don't have any pictures to show you. I have no fancy anything. I just talk. But listen to me carefully. Carefully. 
there's a lot of YouTube channels that are Christian or claim to be, and they are they present with vivid graphics and pictures, and particularly on two subjects that have really gotten to me. And the one subject is YouTube's on the glory and beauty of heaven. Now, th most of them are very encouraging, very spot on. As far as I can see, they're biblically correct and they're very beautiful. But I've run into a lot of videos on hell. And none on the outer darkness other than uh, one, one brief one where a gentleman was saying that um, Christians, Christians can be cast into outer darkness if they're not doing thus and such and so on and so on. And then he went on to list some of the things. I can't even remember them. Uh, but they were things that many of us are guilty of. I don't even mean sins. I don't mean sins. I don't mean like adultery and thieving. I it just, I would say almost petty things. And so for this, he claims that Christians are cast into outer darkness because he was sent there and he said it was the most terrifying thing ever because he just sat there in total darkness. He couldn't see anything and God told him, you're here for eternity. There's no reprieve and there's no getting out of outer darkness. And so he came back out of the outer darkness and he made a YouTube on outer darkness. And it scared me spitless. And I'm not joking. So here we have all this falderal on women and makeup and all this, and we're going to go to hell. And then we have the, all these YouTubes on heaven, which most of them are fine, but then on hell. And then the one I found on outer darkness. And then the ones on hell are, are the worst yet. They show children in hell, I mean about six, five, six years old, suffering in the fires of hell for whatever, oh, because they disobeyed their parents was one reason why the little ones were in hell. And one was a little boy went to hell because he saw some pornography and looked at it. And so on and on. Ridiculous. I don't know. It's it, I just almost say don't watch the ones on hell because they will only confuse you. They don't edify or lift you up at all. They squish you down like a bug. At least they have me. And I, I really don't like it. Now the thing on outer darkness is a little different because <clears throat> we know who hell is for. Hell is for the people that know about Jesus, and they reject him. They say, I want nothing to do with this person called the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't even talk to me. I've had that happen to me, so I know what it's like. I mean, kick me out of their home when I mention the word Jesus Christ. So hell is reserved for Christ rejectors. Hell is probably, I will say, possibly, possibly reserved for anybody who claims to be a Christian and they're not, they're just pretending to be a Christian, hell is probably for that also, or for a person who claims to be a Christian that is living in willful, persistent sin. I mean, if they go to, the, go to town every day and just steal stuff and stuff it in a shopping bag, and they redo it, do it repeatedly, repeatedly, or a man that is in adultery and he cheats on his wife continually, never repents, is, it breaks her heart. Of course, something like that. But listen, I want to read now about the outer darkness. This is, this is what I want to get at more than anything. This is, I'm going to begin, there's just two places I'll do today. There's one in Matthew chapter 8, verse 10 to 12. 
Matthew 8, verse 10 to 12. I'm going to read the whole thing. There was uh, a man said, I need you to heal my son. And Jesus heard it, and he marveled, and he said to them that followed, Verily I say to you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Because Jesus healed his son long distance, right? And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm going to read the second one to you. And then we'll talk about it. 25:30 Matthew chapter 25 verse 30 This is speaking of the profitable servant of God. Okay. For unto every one verse 29 For unto every one that has shall be given and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he has. And cast the unprofitable servant in, see, I can't even see that. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's speaking of the unprofitable servant. If you read that whole chapter in context, be at uh, Matthew 25 beginning maybe at verse 21 and so on, cast the unprofitable servant in outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So it sounds to me like he was a servant of the Lord. And that's terrifying too. So what is it? Jesus said it's real. I want to know what it is. I would say that in Matthew um, 8, 12, I guess it was. Yeah, Matthew 8, verse 12. But the, chi but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. I, I almost think he's speaking about the Jews about the Christ rejecting Jews. Because when you read the whole section there in context, that's what I what I feel. That doesn't mean that's what I truly believe, but that's that's what I feel. Um anyway, these YouTubes can really, really bother you. And especially the ones on hell. Because the ones on hell, the people that make those with these huge graphics and pictures in the background. And I mean, they, I mean they're I mean, vivid. They're really vivid. You know, with demons and the fire and people. I mean, one was uh, people throwing in mud and sinking down in mud pits. And, uh, oh my, just everything wicked that could possibly happen is happening in hell to Christians that don't live up to Christianity. And really, it's terrifying. I, I'm not going to watch any more of them. I'm done. Because what, what is, what did Jesus die for? What did he die for? You know, we, we hear the saying that just one drop of his precious blood. I'm making a video. I can't talk right now. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to start over. I'm not going to start over. You'll have to forgive the, the, the phone call. I couldn't talk. I have no way to shut my phone down. It's a new system for me. My kids got and I can't shut it down. So sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, I was going to say this. Of course, very important point. We have been taught that just one drop from the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ 
is sufficient to cleanse any sinner of all their sins if they are repentant and if they surrender their heart to Jesus. Right? So when you think of Jesus poured all of his life blood out on that horrible, horrible day for the sins of the world, the Bible says, I believe it says, surely the death and the torture before he was crucified, even at the whipping post, the, the stripes he bore, and then the horrible crucifixion, surely that holy blood, which was God's blood, it was not the blood of his mother Mary. The child gets the blood from their father, not the mother. Scientific fact, people. So when people, when Catholics say that Mary is the mother of Jesus, she is the mother of the human Jesus, the human part of Jesus, but not the whole, not the divine part of Jesus Christ. That blood that Jesus shed on the day of his crucifixion was the blood of God, his Father. And that's what gave the Holy Blood its power. To cleanse us from all sin and iniquity. So if that is the truth, which it is, why do we watch videos about Christians going to hell and become tormented by them, which I have? I don't know why. I even, I'm just so curious, you know, I'll look at, well, I won't look at pornography or anything like that, but I'm so curious that I'll look at a lot of things that maybe the sane person wouldn't look at. If You, you know, sometimes I think I'm kind of nutty that way because I'm so, so curious. But God made me that way. That's why I'm a really good writer and a good researcher because I'm curious. I analyze things and I can always, usually always, come to the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the conclusion of the matter, says Solomon, King Solomon in Ecclesiastes. But I'm not able to come to a conclusion about the outer darkness because I don't understand it. Uh, if you have a internet site that can clarify this for me that's fine I'll look at it but I'd like to hear your input and try not to make your response too long because I think I'm going to get a lot of comments on this one so try to make it brief if possible um, as far as wearing slacks for a woman Oh, and high heels, you'll go to hell if you wear high heels. And you'll also go to hell if you paint your nails, which I never do because I don't like nails red. But if you paint your nails any color, you'll go to hell. You wear high heels, you'll go to hell. Wear a necklace, you'll go to hell. Makeup, you'll go to hell. Come on, people. Come on, people. Breaks my heart because... I'm glad that I'm brilliant, brilliant, smart enough to, God gave me a gift years and years ago, and this is a gift I want you to have. I'm going to encourage you now. I want you to have this gift, and I'm going to pray that you do get it, and it is the gift to separate the truth from the lie, and everything that you hear, including politics, you hear me? including this stinking world of politics, especially the side of the, the, the that one side, okay? I think you know what I mean. Um, separate truth from the lie. Reality from error is extremely important. And years and years ago, probably 40 years ago, God gave me that gift. And I start with, and then when I read the Bible, I read it in a new light. But more than that, I, I, because the Bible doesn't lie, I shouldn't 
no, that was wrong. I shouldn't say Bible. When I read anything, like a magazine or a book or uh, watch TV or whatever, I was learning then to separate the lie from the truth. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to pray now. I do pray with my heart that my viewers will be gifted as I was and will be receiving by the power of God's Holy Spirit the discernment and the discerning that they need in this day and age especially, Lord, to separate the lies from the truth, fact, and, and, and deception from fact. Lord God, this is a gift that I ask you to give to each one of my viewers in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I think I've said all I need to say, and I uh, hope this turns out all right. I don't know how long it is, but I sure hope I didn't go over time. I love you all. I miss you all when I'm not with you, and... Uh, my videos are getting fewer and far between, but I thank the Lord I was with you today. God richly bless each one of you, and I send you my love. Bye-bye for now. God bless. Bye-bye.